Hi, this is Asin. You are now watching Asin SL TV. Today, I would like to share how to select more than one item from a drop down list. Let's go to the developer tab and click on Visual Basic. I'm going to right click in this current sheet, that is sheet 1. Firstly, I would like to write a micro to generate the list. As usual, always start by giving it a name, for example, update list. In order to ensure that we provide the options only if the users selected the desired cells. I'm going to make use of the if statement to check if there is any intersection between the selected cell which is represented by active cell and the desired range. For this case, it would be E2 up to E11. Type the range within quotation marks since this must be in terms of string. Closing parenthesis to end the range function. Closing parenthesis parenthesis to end the intersect function. If that is intersection, which means that we must have something. However, in VBA, we don't have any could call something, but we have nothing. To make nothing becomes something, in front of intersect, make use of not. If this is the case, then I can run through all the options by using a for loop. With a dummy i set equal to 2 up to the last rows of of the options, which is 21. Let's type it here, 21. When generating this list, we should not provide those options which were selected by the user. To exclude them, we need another if statement. Let's compare the items in the selected cell. Again, active cell, use the find function and compare with the options, which are always under column A. So we have sheet1.cells, Opening parenthesis, use the dummy i, comma, and column a has a column index of 1. Closing parenthesis, closing parenthesis. And this time, we should have is nothing since we wish to exclude those selected. If this is the case, then I would make use of the dummy call option list equal to itself and use emphasis to join with the rest of the options. But before that, we need a comma type with quotation marks and not the emphasis to join with the rest of the options which are represented by shade one dot cells the dummy i comma always under column a with a column index of one closing parenthesis start with if of course we have to end with if finish the first i proceed to the next and we can now create the drop down by using validation let's make use of the with statement to call this validation for a couple of times without typing it repeatedly. So we have active cell dot validation. Always use dot to call the validation. Firstly, we should delete whatever we have added to avoid error or provide repeated options. Then only we use dot add to add the new items. Firstly, we have to tell the type of data validation that we wish to use. Colon equal and now select the type that is validation list comma use formula one to provide the options again colon equal and the options which are represented by option list next we need this to be in cell drop down so we have dot in cell drop down set equal to through start with with of course we have to end with with start with if and with if and the coding part to generate the list of options is now done Next is to write a code to show this drop down list. To do so from the list of objects, select worksheet. Make sure we are using selection change. Very simple. Call this procedure. Type the name here. So we have update list. And now we can proceed to write the code to allow the user to select more than one item. To do so, instead of using selection change, let's change to change procedure. Since we are using change procedure, which means that whenever file content 
change, this macro will be executed. To avoid Excel running this macro repeatedly, we should exclude those unwanted events. Let's make use of if statement. Firstly, check for the intersection. Instead of using active cell, this time we can make use of the target variable and we compare with the desired range. Again, E2 up to E11. But this time, we should have nothing since we want to exclude those unwanted events. If this is the case, then we should do nothing. We don't have to write any code here. However, if you wish to leave some information here, firstly, use apostrophe and I'll type do nothing. Whenever we see this, which means that when the condition is met, Excel will do nothing. If not the case, then we can first record the new item set equal to target that is contained in the selected cell. Then we should make use of the application dot undo to reverse the process so that we are able to check for the old items that list the previous item selected by the user. Again, set equal to target. Next, let's write condition to combine the items correctly. We have if the old items is nothing, then we should simply make target be equal to the new item. Otherwise, the cell should return a value which is the combination of old items together with the new item. Let's make use of emphasis to connect them. I would need comma with space. Let's type within quotation marks. Another emphasis and join with the new item. Start with if. Of course, we have to end with if. And we can now call the update procedure in order to exclude those selected items. Start with if and with if. Besides, to avoid Excel loop this procedure repeatedly, we should make use of an application. Before adding new item, we should make use of application dot enable event set equal to false, which means that we should stop this procedure. Otherwise, Excel will loop this repeatedly. However, once we have done all this, we should enable this event. So let's set it back to true before and if. Now let's back to the spreadsheet, check the output. So when we click on the cell which is within the range, we have a drop down. Click on it, we should have a list of options here. Let's say I select the first option, click on the drop down again, the option apple disappear. Now let's select another option. So we have comma before the second option. Click on the drop down again, select the other option, repeat the same way. How let's say we want to reselect again, meaning to say I would like to delete the cell. Unfortunately, regardless how many times I press on the delete button, the deletion doesn't occur. But we can see that Excel helps us to join the existing options with comma. So this is not what we wish to do. Let's back to Visual Basic. We should add a few more conditions to exclude this unwanted event. Therefore, we need else if. Make use of target if. Let's say it is equal to nothing, which means that the user deleted those items, then we should do nothing as well. Back to spreadsheet, and now we can apply delete on the cell. How let's say I select a couple of cells and press on the delete button. As we can see, we have a runtime error type mismatch. When I click on the bar, we can see that this line result error. This is because nothing here for only one cell, but I have a couple of cells here here. To overcome this issue, we need another condition that lists else if target followed by the dot count property. However, if we worry that that might overflow due to big data, instead of using the count property, the count large property is a better option. This time, we should set greater than 1. If this is the case, then again, do nothing. Let's reset and back to spreadsheet. Again, let's Let's select a few cells and press on delete. As we can see, nothing happened, no more error. Select the desired cell, click 
on the drop down choose one option click on the drop down again the option is excluded select the second option add it click on drop down the third option add it we can delete if needed select another cell click on drop down select the desired color no more arrow and this is the result that we want okay that's all for this video thanks for watching hope you like this see you